We will not let hate win. That call sprang up across Orlando after the attack. Now, even five years later, some of those signs still stand. I feel like rainbows are a symbol of unity. On a busy street just outside downtown, the home where Emily Buckley and her husband raised their daughter, Zelda, is a symbol of sorts itself, with a rainbow everywhere you look. I really want to embrace my community and send love to others. And their family is not alone with making a display out of their home. And each sign or flag is part of the visible change across the city. For the Buckleys, a big part in choosing their neighborhood after living outside the city is its outward sense of inclusivity. And I've seen it around Colonial Square Park. The park's labyrinth is a colorful memorial to what the community lost at Pulse. And ever since, in response, are other colorful reminders of the community's growth and healing. I usually go out there with a couple people and we just make sure it's cleaned up. Each year now, artist Andrew Spear touches up the mural at the corner of Mills and 50. It was the first in a series of murals that now line walls across the district, many of them painted after the attack, celebrating love and tolerance. I think people might find some solace in it, you know, because art, I don't want to sound cliche with it, but art does heal. Five years ago, Andrew was commissioned to help start the healing process almost immediately. And she was like, um, I want to get a mural up by the end of the week somewhere in Mills 50. And then it was like, oh, I can do the, I can do the 49 birds, almost like they're flying out of the pulse mm. symbol or the logo and they're ascending. So I'd be like, oh, you, here's red, here's yellow. You do this bird. I'll draw it all out. You know, everything's ready to go. And then, and that way... Everyone was part of it. And along with the others that came shortly after it, the mural now is a landmark. I know some, some cats that even have got that image tattooed on their arms. And always a reminder. No one wants to go through that again. And from the murals to the rainbow colors added to the amphitheater beside Lake Eola, change is not just apparent in paint, but also patronage. We're happy to be part of the community and what we do. Inside Hamburger Mary's on Church Street, where the stage is always set for drag performers, new faces have come to be part of the crowd. We've seen a lot more couples, you know, straight couples and groups of 20 or 30, just mixed men and women and just coming out for a good time. You know, it's not looked at as, that, as a gay restaurant. It's look at a place where anybody could go and have fun and see a great show and not feel uncomfortable at all. And I see that, that change happening. The restaurant is a mainstay now, but it wasn't always that way. People say, well, we opened Hamburger Mary's here and you know you found the right spot and it's perfect. It's in the middle of everything. And uh, it really was our fifth choice and our last choice because we went to other spaces and they didn't want our concept. They. Uh, didn't come quite out and say that, you know, they didn't want a gay-themed restaurant in their building or in their strip mall, uh, but they didn't want to have the shows that we have or have that kind of entertainment associated with them. So at the end of the day, it worked out great. And I, I can't think of Hamburger Mary's being anywhere else. And I think the open-mindedness that we're seeing now is 180 degrees from what we saw when we opened in 2008. And that, that is accelerated, I think, since Pulse. Move on to the top of the hive and yeah. rub it on your soap. Oh, and then yes. you. Across town, a shop recently opened its doors. Yeah, a lot of people ask, you know, is it your surname? For Jeff Starks, Maffrey's stands for several dreams made a reality. Matthew is my husband's name. Obviously, I'm Jeffrey, and so the two combined make Maffrey. Not only was starting a business a long-time goal, but so is being able and comfortable sharing its story and his truth with the people who walk inside. The, the joy that I'm using telling the story yeah. and their response, it just reaffirms why we're here in Orlando because that wouldn't happen in a lot of other cities. It's the city beautiful because it's diverse. The inclusion that you feel. You can't beat that. That um, I can interact with my husband the way that anyone else would. I don't know that that would have happened five years ago. The city grew in leaps and bounds and 
um, and we're, we're riding that wave. I definitely think that we have seen lasting change, that we're, we're not gonna go back. Having it be part of just our neighborhood's everyday life, it's really been an amazing thing to see. It's kind of this constant reminder. They didn't die in vain. There's, there's been a change because of them, so, and I like to hold on to that. They probably changed millions of minds across the, the world. Changed minds and hearts. It is truly remarkable how so many in this community work each day to hold up others.